Good evening. Today I will be talking about the how to use the ERG emergency response book. Going through what the different sections are. Going to be going over some examples with it, using it a bit. I think because they're kind of related. Talking quickly about the NFPA 704, the little placard that you see. And in fact. We'll just get that out of the way, because it's a pretty quick section. Then we'll hop into the ERG. So, this is the NFPA sticker you see it on buildings, trucks, packages, that kind of thing. What the four sections mean is red is flammable, yellow is stable reactivity, that kind of thing. White is any special considerations, special hazards, and blue is its effect on health, living tissue, that kind of thing. Quick, easy to remember. Fire is red. Blue, health, you know, hospital, that kind of thing. Yellow. And white, you kind of have to remember there's not a really good way, but red and blue, if you can get red and blue down, you can get these two pretty easy. So, with that breakdown out of the way, let's just look at a couple. Like this guy. And work from top to bottom. Fairly flammable. Three out of four, so it's not you know the worst it can be, but it's pretty high up there. Yellow, free activity. Not completely stable, but not right crazy bad either. Blue is four, so really bad for your health. And white is corrosive. So just looking at this corrosive, it's really bad for your health, not really not super reactive, pretty flammable. This would be like probably a solvent of some kind, industrial cleaner, that kind of thing, if I had to hazard a guess. Okay, up here, fire red square two, so less flammable than the last one we looked at. Not too horribly bad. Reactivity of one, so it's pretty stable by itself. Blue, not as bad for your health as the last one, but it's still pretty high up there. And we got a W with a line through it, so that means it's reactive with water. Don't put water on this, it'll create bigger problems. Here's another good one. Kind of the same as the corrosive one we saw earlier. Fire level of two, middle of the road, fairly highly reactive, really bad for your health, and it's an alkali, so it's some industrial, you know, alkali, probably something you'd find in like batteries or something, that kind of thing, somewhere, it's really bad if you get on it, it reacts with a lot of stuff, but it's slammable, but not, you know, horribly so. We'll throw one more in, where's an interesting one? Here we go. Flammable of two. So, middle of the road, really bad for your health. Yeah, pretty reactive. And it's radioactive. So this would probably be, you know, transport cask for like MRI machines. Well, those are magnets, but like x-ray, you know, transporting radioactive material for x-rays, nuclear waste, that kind of thing. Bad for your health, radioactive. Can be flammable, but not really. And fairly reactive, but not majorly so. So that's 704. We'll get over here, but first we're going to work on this side of the screen. This is the ERG book. You can obviously find them online. Most people have them in you know, the trucks, the ambulances. Every vehicle in the fleet has one in a glove box or something on the dash and then they make a phone app as well but speaking from experience it takes up a lot of space so your mileage may vary with the app there's a couple sections there's a white one an orange one a yellow one a blue one and a green one now doing those really quick white white is supportive information so table of contents you know Rules, 
different classes of what you find, kind of examples of the placards and what group they belong to, different um, trailers, railroad cars, containers, you know. If you show up and you see one of these, you can look in the book and go, oh, okay, it's an intermodal tank or it's, you know, railroad car, different, you know, pictograms, flammable, oxidizer. Has this environment, all that kind of stuff. Generic kind of informational stuff. Yellow pages. It is the guide number in numerical order for the chemical. So if you show up and there's a placard on a truck and it's just got, you know, three... Well, none of these have... These are generic categories, so let's go down the page because those don't have any. You show up and you have a plaque with a four-digit number on it. You can see a couple kind of on the side of the back of this tank truck. If all you have is that number, you can find the number in the book and go, oh, okay, I'm dealing with a refrigerant or gasoline or diesel or helium or whatever it is. So this is going by that four-digit number that all the chemicals have. So what if you don't have a number? Blue pages goes by name. Someone says, hey, we have, you know, acetone. All right, you can go to the blue pages, find the name of the chemical, alphabetical order, and that'll tell you a guide number, which we'll get to. That's a different chapter. And a four-digit number that we can find in the yellow pages. So blue or yellow, depending on which one you have, will give you kind of the other one. If you have the number, you can find the number, and it gives you the name. And if you have the name, you can find the number. Orange pages. This gives you the what to do with what chemical you're dealing with. So all the the names and both the numbers, the two sections we've already talked about, the blue and the yellow, will have a guide number. So you can find your guide number. We'll use 111. Mixed load identified. You don't know what it is. You show up, it's a bunch of barrels, and no one has the number or the name for you. Well, you know, it'll give you a very generic for this one because it's mixed load. You don't know what it is. So fire may react with extinguishing agent. Bombing tanks, different spills, first aid, that kind of stuff. It'll tell you what to do. Evacuation, you know, how far should you evacuate from whatever it is. This is explosive, so isolate for a third of a mile in all directions, or a half mile. Railroad cars, if it's, you know, car, railroad car or trailer with a lot of stuff in it, evacuate for a mile in all directions. So that's the orange pages. It tells you what to do and what to be aware of. And green pages. Green, that's sideways, that kind of sucks, but green is talking about what to do for evacuation distances. So, there's different small spills are kind of the first column. It's sideways, I get it, it sucks. Not much I can do about that. Small spills, and then, like, large spills. So, for example, if you spilled hydrogen cyanide here, it is our guard number, 117, there's our chemical number, 1051. Small spills, you know, depending on the wind, 60 meters, you know, smaller distances, you know, 200 feet, maybe 0.1, maybe a little bit less than half a mile, depending on how much and how bad the wind is. Or if it's a really big spill, you know, 600 feet, half mile, a bit over a mile, that's your evacuation distances. And at the end, we have more white page stuff, more information, you know, for your safety, chemical protective clothing, you know, different levels of the protective clothing, choosing isolation distances, that kind of stuff. So to reiterate, before we look at some examples, white pages are your information, all pages, telling you very generic stuff. 
yellow pages go by the number, the four-digit number that all the chemicals have, and that tells you what it is and why, what guide number to use in the book for dealing with whatever it is. Blue will give you the name of the material with the guide number and the four-digit ID number. Kind of the reverse of the orange pages, or the yellow pages, sorry. And then orange is the actual guide number, which tells you, you know, first aid treatment, what to do if it's on fire, very generic, you know, evacuational distances, that kind of thing. How to really handle what you're dealing with. And then green is the isolation distances. So if it's a small leak or a big leak, you know, if it's day or downwind at night, big spill, little spill, what kind of distances you want to evacuate around the spill. So with that, let's hop into some examples. Let's start with our orange pages. This is usually what you're going to find, right? Trucks tipped over on its side or railroad cars going by. You see these. You know, there's a semi-truck. There's a tank with it. Another kind of tank. You know, railroad cars, you see them a lot. More, Probably more often than not on railroad cars. Ah, the other one. Let's run with this one. Ooh, that sucks. Nah, it's actually not so bad. Okay, we'll run with this one. You show up, this is leaking. Alright, what number are we dealing with? We're dealing with the number 1267. And it's got this red placard with a little white 3 on it. So let's use all our pages to start. Okay, so flamble. It's a 2, that's a 3. Okay. We got a little flame, it's a red placard, a little 3 on the bottom. Yeah, it looks like this guy. Yep, red, three, digit number. Yep, mm -hmm, okay. That's guide 127. So if all you had, no number, if all you had was this plaque with a blank little box right here, didn't tell you anything, don't know what the name is, don't know what the number is, nobody has any idea. You can hop in here in the white tables, and if all you had is like this one right here, just... A little flame and a three and a red square. It'll tell you, ah, guide 127. It's better than nothing. So even if you have no information, you can still head in the right direction. But we do have a number. We have 120 or 1267. So we're going to come down here. Okay, it's three thousands, two thousands, and lower two thousands. 18, probably getting up here. Yeah, okay. 1267. Eh, 16, 12, 10, 13. Okay. Over here? Here. 1267. 1267 is crude oil, petroleum. So crude oil, okay? Guide 128. So we come down to our orange pages because now we know what we're dealing with. That's 119, 120, getting closer, 22, 24, 5, 6, 8. That's the end of 7? Okay, here. Flammable liquids, water immersible. Okay, so this plaque gave us our number, which told us what guide to use. So we're at the guide, it said. So it's highly flammable because it's, it's crude oil. Yeah, this gives you, you know, vapors may you know, travel and flash back, heavier than air, so vapors will sink and collect in low areas. Explosion hazards, runoff may create fire explosion. Many will float on the water, oil. Health, petroleum, uh, petroleum crude oil, which is what we're actually talking about, may contain toxic hydrogen sulfide gas. All right, cool to know. Inhalation or contact may irritate or burn skin and eyes. Fire may produce, you know, toxic gases. Vapors may cause dizzy dizziness or asphyxiation. Cool. So, safety. We're 911. So, you know, this really, this is more for, you know, truck drivers, that kind of thing. Call 911 so we show up. 
right, protective clothing. We're SCBA, all right, cool. Structural gear provides thermal protection, but only limited chemical protection. So if it's on fire, fine, you're protected from the heat. It's structural gear, but it's not going to protect you from the gases and the, you know, the fumes and all that other stuff. Or, you know, if you get it on you, speaking from experience, oil ruins your turnout gear. Don't ask. <laughs> All right, we're going to evacuate. we got a tank car. All right, so if it's a tank car, it's on fire, isolate for a half mile in all directions, and consider initial evacuation for a half mile. So we keep people, you know, we put up our perimeter about a half mile away. Nobody goes near it. And if there's buildings and stuff or, you know, it's downtown, evacuate, get all the people out of those houses and businesses. All right, so it's a fire. We're dealing with a tank car. All right, tanks or tanks or car or trailer loads. Here we are. Fight from maximum distance using master streams. So throw water at it until the problem gets better. Cool containers with flooding quantities of water until well after fire's out. So even if the fire goes out, you get it put out. Good job. And just keep soaking it down. These tanks hold a lot of heat. You got a lot of flammable materials you're dealing with, so soak it down. Stay away from tanks engulfed in fire. Yeah, could be bad. Withdraw immediately in case of rising sound from venting safety devices or discoloration of tank. That's your blevies where things are cooking off. It may explode and you know throw tank cars a mile away. If it's really really bad. And even if maybe your master streams can't reach or your ladder trucks can't reach, just leave and let it go. Evacuate and just... If you can't do anything about it, there's nothing you can do about it. Large spills. You know, dike and dam. Keep it from getting water sources for cleanup. You can keep vapor down with water spray, maybe. First aid. And with one cool, got it, we're there. Move to fresh air, if available. If they're not breathing, give them air. Start breathing for them. Isolate contaminated clothing and shoes. If they're soaked in oil, clean them, get it off of them. In, in case of contact, flush with running water. In case of burns, you know, cool affected skin. If the clothing is, like, burnt to the skin... Don't try and remove it. There. Cool. Sweet. Now, because the green section is sideways on the PDF, we're going to look at this one, but we're going to kind of stay out of it. Just because it's, you know, awkward to read. So, 1267. So, right now we're in 1244. Actually, not bad. 1195, 11, 95. That's interesting. We'll do another one. That's weird. Sometimes it goes by... Sometimes these are weird. Where it's more by guide number. So you see... The numbers may jump around. But the guide numbers are pretty... So these are the, all, all the 173 guides. In theory, it should go by ID number, but as we discovered, it's not in the mood. But we'll try and find one that works decently. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read. 1268, Ken did one like that. What else looks good? What looks fun and interesting? Oh, here's a good one. We'll use our white pages.
you get cold, you're on the fire department. Hey, I work at this company. I've got a big box of stuff, and it's leaking all over the place. Or it's spilling all over the place, whatever it is. So you get there. And they say, yep, we don't know what it is. It's got the placard on it. There it is. We got nothing. All right. So you come into your book. Well, let's look at our picture. Okay, organic peroxide. It's not really a name of a chemical. You know, it doesn't tell you, you know, crude oil or whatever. It's just kind of a very generic. There's no, you know, four-digit number. Company's like, eh, we don't know what the name is. It got shipped to us by accident. We have no idea. All right, so, okay, come in here. 5.2, yellow square, peroxide. Okay, 5.2. Ooh, cool, we got 5.2. Yellow square, it's got the little flaming ball on top for oxidizer. And here's organic peroxide, so yeah, it falls into this category. It looks a lot like these. That gives us got 148. All right, cool. So we go to our orange pages. It's 128 again. I said, what, 148? Great. Stroked out. 148, yeah. A lot of numbers in this book. 67. 62. Be up a ways. 52. 48. Okay. 148. Organic peroxides. Okay, cool. Here's what it is. We said it spilled everywhere. So it's not on fire, so we're not really worried about that. Health. Yeah, it spilled. So let's see. On fire, so not really worried. Ingestion or contact with substance may cause severe injury or burns. Noted. Runoff from fire control or dilution in water may cause environmental contamination. All right. Immediate. You show up how far we, you know, it's a box spilling everywhere. Isolate the area for at least 150 feet for liquids and 75 feet for solids. There. That's our working area. You know, if it's a bigger spill, you may need a bigger area, but. Generally, small spill initially here. Okay, so now we've evacuated. It's a spill. We're running a small spill here. Pick up with inert, damp, non combustible material using clean, non sparking tools and place into loosely covered plastic containers for later disposal. Do not allow the substance to warm up. Use coolant agents such as dry ice or ice. This is not possible. Evacuate immediately. So. Eliminate, eliminate ignition sources. Keep the combustibles away from it. Don't walk through it. Don't rub it on your skin. Stop leak if you can safely do it without risk. So what it's saying was small spill. Kind of read between the lines. Pick up with inert damp. Not a material. Some clean, not sparking tool. Plus, so that's basically get your big plastic, you know, hazmat drum packing container out and use the special non-sparking shovels and just clean it up and contain it and make it someone else's problem. First aid. Tell EMS what they're dealing with. Move people to fresh air. Oxygen if needed. Contaminated clothing may be a fire risk. Remove from skin so if it's dry and it's on them, brush it off. Keep them calm. Flush skin or eyes if you have to. Cool. So basically, we're, in our scenario, we're dealing with you know, a little container that spilled. Didn't know what it was. We found out, you know, safe to clean it up, keep it from fire. If it gets on people, you know, brush it off, rinse it off, oxygen if needed. Sweet. Short, sweet to the point. We'll do like two more. Try to keep this a little bit more of a contained video. Poison gas, we already kind of did one like that. We did like a flammable one, explosives. Ooh, nice. Hot. 3257. That's interesting. Let's see what we can learn. We're going to look at this first. So that's guide 128. So in theory... 
hot, you know, ignoring our number, has got 128 based on the, the placard itself. So, hopefully, this is the correct, you know, label, for or quick correct, you know, placard for this material, because it's a clip art, and, you know, sometimes not everything's accurate. If we get if we find our number, it should say guide 128, because that's what our placard is telling us. So 3257. Alright, we got a ways. That's like mid thousands. That's the blue section. A little too far. Close. 3257. Elevated temperature liquid. Hot, yeah, yeah, it's an elevated temperature. So that number is good for that placard. Guide 171. For this one, it's just, it's not, you know, a specific material. It's just, you know, above 212 degrees and below its flash point. So it's above boiling, but it's below the point where, you know, it just flashes. So that's so this placard's for like a generic, you know, heated during transport chemical. 171. 31. 40. All right. Let's do another railroad car. And it's on fire. Because why not? Okay, so. Okay. We're not dealing with the polymer beads because that's not the number we have. That's not the number we have. So we're transported hot. In this case, it is. So let's see. Protective clothing. Where SCBA, structural gear, provides thermal protection, but not a lot of chemical protection. Evacuate, we're saying it's on fire. It's a tank car. So isolate for half a mile, and evacuate for half a mile. Big fire, fire involving tanks. Cool containers with loads of water until after it's out, and really out, keep... Soaking it down. If there's, you know, signs of a blevy, leave. And always stay away from tanks engulfed in fire. So if you got a tank, and there's a pool of stuff on fire around it, stay away from it. Because this can lead to this second one. So we're not really dealing with a spill or leak because it's on fire. It's 911, fresh air, respirations and oxygen is heated. Clean... Get the material off of them. Cool. We're going to try and find guide 171 in here. It's 119, 123. 327. Ooh, here we go. 33, 32, 79. And not hundred percent of them have an isolation distance because that one was like a generic it's on fire isolate for half a mile we'll find one at least try to but not everything gets a green page one more one more and then we'll call it a victory and this one we're not going to break down, go through all of them, because I've done that a couple times. We're just going to run off of, you know, real-world kind of scenario. Get called to a, you know, I want, like, a scenario. Why don't we can build a scenario off of? Can we read any of you? No. Try and find a 
decent one that we can build the scenario off of. Can't read any of those. Corrosive toxic. Here we go. Here's a good one. That's on the back of a truck. You show up. This is leaking. It's on the back of a semi-trailer. You have to control the spill. 3082. We have a number. We don't need to worry about you know identifying our placard because we have the source itself. So 3082. Go to our yellow pages, 37, 82. 3082 can be a bunch of things. Environmentally hazardous substance or hazardous waste or regulated substance. Kind of a generic thing. So that's also telling us guide 171. Cool. 61. I think this is the guide we were just in. But we can run it anyway. Yeah. Fire explosion. Not exploded. Not heated. Health inhalation may be harmful. Contact may cause burns. Asbestos. We're dealing with a tank truck, so probably not. But there it is anyway. Fire. Not really worried about that. Liquids may produce vapor that can cause dizziness or asphyxiation. Good to know. Runoff. May cause environmental contamination, so may have to call the DNR. 911, SCBA for spill. For non highlighted materials, which would have been our first page, so we'll go back and look at that. One seventy one, we're dealing with a spill, large spill. If it's liquid, dike and dam, so it doesn't, you know, get everywhere. Cover powder with a plastic sheet sheet or tarp and prevent entry into water. Ways or basements or places where you don't want it. First aid, tell EMS what they're dealing with. Fresh air, oxygen if needed, in case of contact, flush with running water. Very generic stuff. Now, the reason, and I'd forgotten about this initially, why we couldn't find those previous ones in the guide, is because in here, Only things that have a green highlighted bar are in those green pages for isolation distances and like air stuff. So the ones we were working with before weren't highlighted. They don't have a green page. So here's a bunch that are. And usually it's like like liquefied gases and stuff. Gases have, you know, big evacuation distances because it's a gas and you really can't contain it. They're like propane and stuff like that. So, green pages. Let's pick 3162. There's a whole bunch of them it can be. But it's green, so we know we have a green table for it. So we can come down here, find our 3162. 3162. 3162. Here's all, you know, from our previous page. Here's our guide number. This is all the stuff we found. They were highlighting green. So if it's a small spill, you know, initially isolate 300 feet, and then, depending on day or night, 0.3 miles or closer to 2 miles. Or for really big spills, yeah, Really big spills, 3,000 feet initially, and then day or night dependent, shade under 4 miles or shade over 6 miles. So that's how the green green pages will work. I'm telling you, if you have one of these chemicals, and the blue pages work the same way, the orange, the blue pages work the same way, they're highlighted in green. If you have one of these green ones, when you find it, that's a, your clue in. There's an evacuation distance in the, you know, 
aerosolized, I guess, you know, long range evacuation distances charts. So, other than that little hiccup about using the green charts, thank you for watching. I hope to do more focused stuff on hazmat, you know, different levels of hazmat gear, some basic stuff. Now that we've learned how to use the book, how to kind of manage it, you know, hazmat. Probably more awareness stuff, not, you know, technical stuff, not actually cleaning stuff up, but the very generic basic stuff. So, thank you for watching. If there's something you'd like to see covered, always let me know. Have a good night, evening, whatever it may be.